All right. Again, I want to welcome everyone for coming today to get a good program going. I wanted to talk a little bit about my staff. Because, you know, without, uh, without the staff, without people willing to help, we would not be able to have a club. Because I certainly can't do it by myself. My wife can, would tell you I can't do much of anything by <laughs> She's a real boss. Anyway, the staff that I have, if they could stand up and come out from behind the table. Deb, Lauren, uh, Angela, Michelle, I think they're sitting up somewhere. Gerald, stand up. Gerald. All right, now, I want you to notice, I want you to notice something. I, first, I need you to, to make sure and pray for the Batliners and our staff. But there's one person we really need to pray for. I want you to notice there's Melanie in the back. Here's Bev. There's Daryl Lee. There's Diane. Here's Michelle and Angela maybe over here. Well, how many ladies was that? <laughs> A number of them. Now for the, and Crystal, now for the guy, guy staff, my guy counselors, I have, oh, let's see, Ben. <laughs> he needs your parents. He's got about uh, 16 boys on his own. You know, I help when I can, but I am in desperate need of boys' counselors. There's got to be a dad out there somewhere that uh, you guys can sit down with. Would be willing to come and help. Uh, I know next year I'm getting a good crop of uh, kids coming in. I can hardly wait. I prayed for 30 last year and got my 30. And I'm going for 40 this year. But I'm going to need some staff to help with that. Turning it off. Hey, okay. Forty kids. How many? I just wanted to ask a quick question. How many people out here have been in a Pathfinder club uh, before? You raise your hands. Wow. Oh, okay. Very good. There's quite a bit. How many of just Puyallup been here that just have been at the Puyallup Club? There's still quite a few. Quite a few. Um, the uh, Pathfinder Club has a lot of leaders. One of the things that we do is train our young people for service. And the people that I see raise their hands today. You know, we've got uh, one of the deacons here, uh, we've got a school teacher here, the we're all in Pathfinders here uh, in this club, and it's pretty neat to see. All right, Pathfinders are excited to uh, bring you a little play, a little skip today. Uh, before we begin, I just need to do a little, uh, tell you about what it's about. Second Kings, there's a story about four lepers. This thing on? Gonna go? Nope. Anyway, four lepers. Now, being a leper in Samaria is never gonna, gonna be a good thing. Uh, being a leper is not not great. You got to sit outside the city. You're not allowed to come in, and you got to beg for your food. But in Samaria at this time, there was no food. There had been a famine, drought, and to make matters worse, the enemies, the Syrians, were had laid siege to the city, so they were surrounded, and Samaria was out of food. Totally out of food. You want to know how bad they were out of food? Read chapter six. It was it was 
I open. Anyway, so you got these four lepers, and they're sitting outside the city, and they're still listening on their conversation we had a little, little bit. Okay, we're starving. Man, we got to get something to eat. Yeah, but if we go inside, if we go inside the gates, we're going to get killed. Well, yeah, but if we stay out here, we're going to starve. I, I, and then, you know, there's got to be somebody that comes up with a goofy idea. I know. Let's go to the Syrians, and we can surrender. Maybe they'll beat us, or we get killed. So, three out of four scenarios, they're going to die. Not Ruben Alves. So, they make the decision at dusk, they're not going to get any more food from the city. Gates are closing, it's going to get dark. They make the decision to go to the camp, Syrian camp. So they get there, they get to the outskirts of the camp, and nobody's there. Everybody's gone. What? No one's going on. There's nobody here. They go inside the tent, and there's food, the donkeys, the swords. Everything is here. It's a feast. The Lord had caused the noise of a great army. And it had scared the Syrians so bad that they took off and they left everything there. They were just running for their lives. So everything was there. They had plenty of food. So these lepers sat out and had a feast. Had a great time. They were loading up on food. And they said, man, we've got to take this and hide it somewhere. And all these swords, we can sell it and make money. We're going to be able to eat good. So they loaded up some donkey stuff, take it, I don't know, to the leper colony to go and hide it. They come back with a second load. And they're loading up. And one of them goes, you know, this isn't right. We have good news. And we need to share that news. With the city. And then it dawned on him, oh, yeah, you're right. Well, you better go now. Let's not wait till morning. Let's go. So they go back to the city, they holler at the gatekeeper, hey, the Syrians are all gone. They have good news. They saved that city. How many of us have good news? And yet, we remain silent. I've had the opportunity uh, through my job that I used to have to uh, travel all over the world and I've been through all 50 states. But one of the best things that I enjoy in my travels is I spent about six months in the South and I was able to go see all the battlefields. I love Civil War, Revolutionary War, we need any any war. Um, but I love history. Dearly, the kids would come and we'd go see these battlefields. Dearly wasn't so excited about that. Um, it was, you know, oh great, another battlefield. Oh, there's a cannon, I haven't seen that before. <laughs> Just drop her off at a strip mall full of souvenir shops and she's good. But, uh, the one thing that I learned uh, about the Civil War was this guy, George B. McClellan, uh, had been a soldier during the uh, Mexican-American War, was promoted to general in charge of all the Union armies. Lincoln had already gone through a couple of generals, he was getting pretty disappointed. This guy's next, we'll give him a try. So he gets in the position and he goes, I'll have a report for you, it'll take me a couple of weeks to figure out what's going on and I'll get back to you. And Lincoln's like, I just need you to attack the enemy, we need to attack. Okay, I'll, I'll get back to you. So after six months of planning, training, you know, first thing he says, I need 75,000 more men. How long has it taken those days to get 75,000 men? And, well, we need uniforms, and, you know, we need guns. We need ammunition. So he gets his men, he starts working on guns and ammunition. And he gets 
thousands of cannons, thousands of wagons, all of the things. I mean, and I could just hear, hear him go to President Lincoln, Lincoln's begging, please, you know, let's attack. Well, you know, we got to have blankets. Our men need blankets in the field. And, well, the cheapest ones are these gray ones here, but, oh, yeah, the South's already taken that color. So we're looking at this light blue, but the Navy's using that. So we're going to have to go with this more expensive, darker blanket. You know, by this time, Lincoln is just like, oh. He wants to attack. So finally, Lincoln says, forget it. You're done. And he relieves him. You know, and in the papers, Lincoln said, uh, well, if Mr. General McClellan's not going to use the army, I'd just like to borrow it for a while. So he's replaced. How many times do we, well, this generation, we have more tools at our disposal, more knowledge, more ways to witness, yet we don't attack. We don't advance the cause and attack that enemy. We need to be spreading that good news. I have a daughter. <laughs> Many of you may not know that. Yeah, that one. She was our firstborn. We uh, had to lock ourselves in a room and try to decide what we were going to name her. We didn't know. We finally came up with Kimberly. Kim, uh, that was a nice name. Looked in the book and it says Mountain Meadow. Well, I like mountains, you know. Man, there's nothing better than being up the mountains in a nice meadow. Well, it's named Kimberly. So she was born, and uh, within a month, um, we found out that she was very focused. Okay, stubborn. <laughs> she, but, you know, it's a good thing, because she wasn't going to be influenced by her surroundings, peer pressure, things like that. Didn't matter to her. One of the things, you know, we tell her to go to bed. It's like, no, I'm not going to bed. I mean, it was a fight every night. Finally, you know, because, you know, you threaten them and, okay, I'll, I'll go to bed. But you can't make me sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things she liked. Horses. Things she doesn't like? Beans. Yeah, I know. We consider therapy. I mean, what good audience doesn't like beans? No tostados? I, you know, I don't know. What do you do with that? But because of the loving church right here, good school, she went to all eight years. She turned out okay. The reason you don't see her much is because she's Dean of Women at Milo Adventist Academy. So the reason you don't see us much is because we're down there at least once a month taking care of her kids so she can take care of the other kids. I mean, if that tells you how much of a control person she was, you know, running her kids wasn't enough, she's got to have another 60 to take care of. <laughs> she's a mother. But she takes after a good one. Anyway, this, uh, I got a quick story to tell about my daughter. It happened after her eighth grade graduation from the school. I had the, I was lucky, I got out work early, and so I was able to pick the kids up after school. Now school was out, so I was picking up for my mom's. And we come home. And usually the kids would get out of the car and go in the house, and I'd get the mail and follow them in. Well, it was the day after graduation, we got home, normal routine, but instead of going to the house, Kimberly runs to the mailbox. Okay, that's fine, whatever. And uh, sums through the mail, hands me the mail, goes in the house. Next day, same thing. Runs to that mailbox, grabs the mail. Here, 
go to the house. You know, by the third day, it's like, Kimberly, what are you doing? Why all of a sudden do you need this mail? Too many told Imagine that. A week passed, and I think it was a Monday, after a week after eighth grade graduation. She goes to the mailbox, thumbs through the mail, lets out a big holler, oh! takes the little envelope, rips it to shreds. She's holding something. Ben and I are just like, the world. And then she starts doing dances and cartwheels. You know, the Lauren had to start wearing a helmet because of my daughter and cartwheels. <laughs> but she started doing these cartwheels. It's like, what in the world? And then she hollers, I got all A's, I got all A's. She had good news. And she could not wait to tell somebody. We need to be that same way. We have such good news. I mean, if she was excited about A's, just think how excited we should be about preaching the gospel. Spreading that good news to others. Our Pathfinders today have a play, a skit that they're going to do. Because I get it. Not everybody can walk up to somebody and start preaching. I get that. Our Pathfinders are going to demonstrate a way that you can spread the gospel. Passively. All right. Hopefully they're ready. You got to get ready your mic. <laughs> he still has the mic. Mm-hmm. He just turned on him. This is the story about John. He's a Christian, a young man, newly married and starting a new job, and the lecture at a new job. Hi, I'm John. May I sit here? Yes, at the head of the table, have to clean up. Hi, I'm Marge. You can see the new guy. That's Ron. That's Bill. Sam. That's Karen. Hi. Say hello, Pam. Um. Time passes. Do you hear about the new orders? We're supposed to be working all the time, all summer. And you'll be working Saturday also. Great, I can use the overtime than you think you can. Uh, and they never had the other sister has been a long, but the mother was unhappy and believes everyone else should be unhappy. Well, at least it is better than John. He never seems to be unhappy about anything. He has a new position. It's much easier. I'm stuck in the same job for three years. Oh, and you have a nice wife, nice family, nice church. What are you doing this weekend? Probably being nice to some old people. Whoa, Pam. John got you going and he didn't even do anything to you. Like I said, if she isn't happy, nobody can be happy. Oh, why don't you go? Trouble begins 
see, sir, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, and Saturday's our Sabbath. We don't work on our Sabbath. Oh, yes, I'm informed about the Seventh-day Adventist. Rogers won also. He tried the same tactics you did to get out of work, but it's not going to work. There could be consequences if you do not show up. Yes, sir, I understand, sir, but I wrote it all over my application. I will not work on Sabbath. <laughs> Later that day, Hey John, I have your application here. I am informed about your Sabbath and not wanting to work Saturdays, but I'm afraid we may need you here. If not, you may not have a job. Are you threatening to fire me? If so, do it now. Otherwise, I will be here on Monday, ready to work as usual. But I'm not working on my Sabbath. The next Monday at lunch... Where were you on Saturday? Tom was furious. Didn't you know? He's an Adventist. They don't work Saturdays. Christians. Huh. No wonder they're always happy. They don't work weekends. Adventists. I've heard of them. Are they the ones who don't eat meat? That is a recommendation. It is proven too much red meat can cause health issues. I go to church, but when it is done, I can wash the car and do chores. Why can't you wait and then go to church? We believe it is God's day, and we honor Him by worshiping Him all day. He's our Creator and yours. Oh, please, give it a rest. Two years later... Hey, John, do you have a minute? Sure, Ed. What's up? So, my mom is sick, and I say she may not live. You're a Christian. You've got some pull with the big guy. Would you mind praying with me? Sure, Ed. Join me. We can do it right here. Dear God, please be with Ed's mother. You know that she's sick. Please help her to get better. And please be with Ed and his family. Amen. Thanks for praying for me and my family, John. Five years later. Did you hear about Ken? He died, burned over most of his body. They're going to have a memorial here for him. Yeah, I know. They've asked me to say a few words and pray. Why do they have to do that in the workplace? Isn't that illegal now? Really, Pam, a co-worker of his dies. At least John is doing it. Dwayne makes me sick. He won't shut up about his church. Even when you ask him to stop, he doesn't. He acts like he's better than everyone else. John doesn't do that. You know he is a Christian, but he doesn't have to announce it to the world. Time passes. Hi, John. My aunt just became an Adventist. She lives in North Carolina. She's always believed in God, and she's always studying. She wouldn't commit to a church if it didn't speak the truth. Now I know two Adventists. I know you and what you stand for, and I know that my aunt wouldn't commit unless it spoke the truth. If I were to join a church, it'd be your church. Did you hear about the layoff? It sounds pretty bad. There are a hundred people here. Who are going to be gone? Probably me. I'm the troublemaker around here. This will be their chance. Did you see the memo on the bulletin board? No one is allowed to harass or talk to others about the religion. Instead of being laid off, I think I'll retire. I think that is in response to Dwayne. He just won't be quiet when you ask him to stop. John, you are just as religious as him, but you are not annoying. It'll be my luck. I'll be the only one laid off. Wait, did you say retire? How could they lay you off? You have an appointment spot. Seems like every time Saturday comes along, you get promoted to a position where it is not important that you be here. Your God has to be with you. Oh, oh please. God again? Did you say retire? 
one week later, One week later. Oh no, Marge is retired. Bill has been let go. Ron is going to assembly. I'm being moved to inspection and I have to work with you. I'm bringing earphones so I don't have to listen to you singing Christian songs into the repair station. Time passes. whatever happens. Can you please tell me what it is that makes you so sure that you can always be at peace? Oh, I suppose. Just how much do you want to hear? Do you want the whole story or do you want it in a nutshell? We're not going anywhere. Might as well tell me the entire story. Okay, here it goes. I have good news. John, you know we need a new supervisor, and you're next in line right for the job. But with you not working Saturdays, it just would not be fair to the others. We're thinking about hiring a manager, and with your knowledge of technical know-how, I know you'll make a great team. Okay, John? Okay, Tom. Whatever you say, I'll always do my best. <laughs> More time passes. John, we missed you Friday. This place was a mess. We see now it really runs the department. You'll be getting a raise. By the way, we were wondering about making you the new night shift manager. The new shift will start Sunday night, so that way you don't have to work Friday night or Saturday. How does that sound? Great, Tom. Thanks. John, I have to tell you, I met someone at my church group meetings. I have a date. Wow, and now you're being nice enough, people actually want to be with you. <laughs> Stop. John, you are right. When you trust in the Lord, things just work out better. And maybe that smile helps also. <laughs> Twenty-five happy years later. Hey, Bob. I got John here. He's here to see you. Yes. Well, John, you've been here, what, 25 years? We've seen a lot of growth since you started, from 25 employees to 300 people, from one city block to three blocks. I prayed for this company from the beginning, and you have continued to keep me here. And I believe that God has allowed your company to prosper because you continue to keep me here, even when it is not convenient for you to do so. You've been an asset to this company as worker, supervisor, manager. Then we send you all over the world for customer service and assessor. Wait, wait. I just have to say, you two have an uncanny resemblance to each other. Now 
the company has been sold, and you are the only employee the new owners are keeping. Your God does look out for you. I think now He has given you another company so you can share that good news with them. It has been a privilege to know you, John. Good luck in your new endeavors. God has called each and every one of us to be witnesses for Him every single day. You are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. It doesn't matter how you witness, God will be with you, and He will give you the opportunity and the words to say if you ask Him. And we have nothing to fear. In 2 Timothy 1.7 it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Take advantage of the opportunities that God gives you to witness His good news. I was very impressed with uh, the jobs they all did this morning. It was very, very good. Let's bow our heads for closing prayer. Father in heaven, we are so blessed this morning because your pathfinders have done their job this morning. I pray that you'll be with us today, keep us safe, and help us to be blessed on your Sabbath day. We ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.